let's see about iugr that is intrauterine growth restriction what is iugr it is defined as a condition wherein the fetal weight is less than 10th percentile or less than minus 2 standard deviation for the corresponding gestational age so the fetal weight fw stands for fetal weight fetal weight less than 10th percentile or less than minus 2 standard deviation for the corresponding gestational age and that is called as intrauterine growth restriction in common terms as the name suggests intrauterine growth restriction there is restriction of growth seen within the uterus so the baby's growth is restricted within the uterus that is intrauterine growth restriction so the baby fails to reach its genetic growth potential and this has an increased risk of perinatal morbidity and mortality this can result in a fetus which is small for gestational age so the baby is small for its gestational age this is seen in around 10, 3 to 10% of infants during pregnancy so this is the incidence now coming to the normal growth of fetus fetal growth generally occurs in three phases first is cellular hyperplasia phase as the name suggests hyperplasia so there is increase in cell number this is seen in the initial 16 weeks of gestation the second phase is the phase of concomitant hyperplasia and hypertrophy both hyperplasia and hypertrophy occurs this is seen between weeks 16 to 32 hyperplasia is increase in cell number whereas hypertrophy is increase in cell size this is the second stage and the third phase is cellular hypertrophy phase so here only hypertrophy occurs the cell number remains constant whereas the cell size increases this is seen from week 32 to term term is nothing but week 37 to week 42 so this is the normal fetal growth now coming to intrauterine growth restriction this is classified into three types type 1 also called as symmetrical or intrinsic iugr type 2 which is asymmetric or extrinsic iugr and type 3 is intermediate iugr which is a combination of 1 and 2 this is seen in about 5 to 10% of the cases so the two main types are type 1 symmetrical or intrinsic iugr type 2 asymmetrical or extrinsic iugr so let's see about these two in detail first type 1 type 1 accounts for about 20 to 30% of the iugr whereas type 2 accounts for about 70 to 80% of the iugr type 1 occurs when there is inhibition early in pregnancy 
that is when the cellular hyperplasia phase is decreased or impaired cellular hyperplasia is impaired so the main causes for these include torch infections maternal torch infections during pregnancy chromosomal disorders or congenital malformations in type 2 or asymmetric iugr it is characterized by a greater decrease in the abdominal size than the head circumference so the head circumference remains greater than the abdominal circumference and this occurs because of utero placental insufficiency and this in turn are caused due to chronic hypertension any vasculopathies or renal diseases in the mother so here there is asymmetric growth because of redistribution of the blood the redistribution of blood flow to vital organs at the expense of non vital organs so from the non vital organs like abdomen lungs and skin the blood flow is redistributed to the vital organs like brain heart and placenta this results in asymmetric iugr and one more point is in asymmetric iugr the growth inhibition occurs late in pregnancy that is after 28 weeks so here the number of cells will be normal but the cells will be smaller in size because the cellular hypertrophy phase is affected here now coming to the etiology we can divide the etiology into maternal factors fetal factors and pregnancy complications first let's see the maternal factors maternal factors the most common one is maternal malnutrition or under nutrition in other terms which is more common in underdeveloped and developing countries next will be chronic maternal hypoxemia due to various conditions like any lung diseases or cyanotic heart disease or severe anemia because of which there is impaired oxygenation and the next is any prothrombotic disorders in the mother which decrease the utero placental perfusion for example apla syndrome anti phospholipid antibody syndrome also other causes include hypertension or any vascular diseases in the mother also pre eclampsia and uh, infections in the mother especially the torch infections substance abuse by the mother smoking or previous delivery of iugr baby these are the maternal factors coming to the fetal factors the fetal factors include congenital malformations in the fetus
fetal infections any bacterial or viral or protozoal infections among viral infections the most common will be cytomegalovirus or rubella protozoal infections like toxoplasmosis malaria etc also infections like listeriasis tb and syphilis in bacterial also cause fetal growth restriction and one more cause in fetus will be any chromosomal anomalies like trisomy 21 or trisomy 18 now coming to the pregnancy complications multiple pregnancy is one of the complication which can lead to iugr so here there can be decreased growth of one or both the fetus next placental abnormalities or cord abnormalities so these are all the causes for iugr that's it for this video we'll see about the diagnosis management and the remaining in our next video thank you